Guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you another painting tutorial. Today I had the privilege of painting up the new plastic orc or boss in Mega Armor. Um, absolutely stellar miniature and as soon as I seen it I was super excited to paint it and it has taken until now for me to uh, actually get it put together and paint it up. Um, it was a super super fun model to paint um, and I'm going to show you how I did that in this video step by step. Um, the armor in particular I think was uh, quite a clever little trick to get it done looking nice and looking orky quite quickly so stick around to see that and um, you might learn a thing or two. I also have something important to ask you guys about this miniature um, at the end of the video, um, something to do with what's going to happen in the future so I'd really like your input on something so stick around to the end of the video and answer that question for me. Thanks guys, enjoy the video. Okay, unlike most of my videos, there is actually no zenithal spraying uh, in preparation of this model. It is just one nice clean all over coat of Chaos Black Spray. I'll make sure to get all the nooks and crannies um, and wait for that to fully dry. From then, we are going to move on to Rhinox Hide. This is going to be the first coat in building up the armor. My goal is to uh, achieve a rusted effect across all the armor panels and then add the color on top of that in um, kind of a scratchy textured approach. So. To begin that off, we are going to basically stab Rhinox Hide at all of the armor panels. The reason we are stabbing it is we do want it to get into all the nooks and crannies quite fast. And also will leave a not a perfectly smooth coat, which is kind of what we're going for. Rust is not a perfectly smooth thing. Um, it's supposed to be a bit uh, banged up. So um, take your time, make sure you get uh, the Rhinox Hide into all the little nooks and crannies. And when you're finished, it should look something like this. Kind of like a big chocolate orc. Don't eat them though, it won't taste nearly as good as I thought it was going to. Um, from here, we move on to Riser Rust, which is a dry paint by Games Workshop, and it's designed to do the uh, rust uh, effect on miniatures. So, um, like the previous step, we are indeed going to be stabbing it at the miniature. This is actually a stippling motion, so it's a lot lighter than the Rhinox Hide. You want to get about as much paint on the brush as if you were going to dry brush, and then stab it in at the armor panels just leaving little traces of orange um, behind you as you go and you can obviously add more orange as you go along to uh, get the desired level of rust that you want and um, it's kind of like a personal preference of how orange you want it to be don't worry the miniature isn't going to end up orange at the end um, this is just the next step in the rust Okay, once that orange has been fully applied, the Rise of Rust, it's time to move on to a Lead Belcher Dry Brush. And this is just gonna catch all the raised areas of the rust, so any of the uh, chipped areas, any of the scratchy areas. I've actually used this technique before um, on a video for painting a 3D printed robot that would suit Necromunda. Um, but uh, I thought it was a perfect technique to hit up again with this particular Orc Warp Boss. I'm obviously going for different colors after the rust stage, but I'm quite pleased with how it turned out in the end. I just, I always get surprised by how good the uh, the dry brush catches all the edges and makes it pop. Absolutely stunning. And the transition from it all being silvered up. I mean, that's a good looking model already. You could do rusty themed orcs, just paint the skin and cloth after that, and it would look super cool. I, however, I'm going to go for Speed Freaks style for this guy. So I'm going to start in with the reds. So I'm going to start with Mephist on red. And the idea is we are going to do pick one direction. And then we are going to basically feather along all of the armor panels. Quite streaky. Um, it's supposed to simulate the idea that the orc has at one stage painted his armor. But of course, he is constantly fighting, constantly butting heads with other orcs and engaged in war so it's mostly scratched and chipped off there's not a clear smooth panel on his armor if there ever was one to begin with so what you're trying to do is apply the red but leaving a lot of that rust um, in all of the nooks and crannies anywhere where the uh, the paint will have not gotten chipped off this is a super fun process it takes a little bit of time and um, and it doesn't look great when you start doing it, but as you get more of the model red, it just, it pops, it looks great. And this is all of the red armor done on the orc with that feathering technique. Once I got to this stage, I was like, okay, this paint job is going to work. I'm super pleased with this. 
Uh, the next thing we're going to do is go on to Celestra Grey and we're going to pick out all the other details that are on his armor. So any of the raised skull motifs or any of the uh, like orky glyphs and stuff that is badly welded or hammered into his armor. We are just going to make them pop a little bit with Celestra Grey. I almost missed his uh, chest glyph, so it's underneath his axe. I don't miss it when you guys are doing it. Okay, this is where we're at now. Now, just to add a little bit more of that damaged and bashed look, we are going to go in again with another light dry brush of lead belcher all over the armor. This is to once again, hit all the edges that may have been redded up, if that's the correct way to say that, um, and just pull it back towards that kind of wrecked and damaged look. As you can see, I'm going super light, just trying to aim for all of those edges. And the difference this makes is unbelievable. Proper orky looking armor. I think it looks particularly good across his legs. See how it stands out, catching all those edges. Made me super excited to get the uh, orc force he belongs in up and running. And get some cool games with them okay now for me that is where the armor is actually completed so now it's time to jump in and get the rest of the details done starting with his skin so i'm going to use a base coat of wa flesh and i'm going to coat all the orc and all the gretchen on top of his skin so be super careful with this you don't want to hit any of the red or celestial gray or any of those bits you just want to get the skin and there's a few tricky hard to reach places in between kind of the pipes and stuff around his arms so just take your time and make sure you get those guys. And if you've managed to get all of the little parts, it should look something like this. Already starting to look like a, a gnarly orc war boss. We're gonna go over to Corvus Black now. This is a, a, a black paint with a bit of a gray tone through it. And we're gonna use this to black out his pants and the cloth um, kind of taberty thing that he has. We are also going to use it to hit the wrappings on his um, his Uj chopper and any of the little cables and stuff that are coming down his back that do not look like metal wires. They look like those kind of plastic wrapped wires. I hit them with Corvus Black too, just to, to break it all up. And after I did that, it should look something like this. I feel like Art Attack every time I say that. Showing my age there with that. Uh, moving over to Screamer Pink. And we're going to use this for the inside of his mouth. So I usually do this first, obviously, because we would hit the teeth loads if we did this after. But I usually painted the teeth uh, and up around the teeth with this as well. Just to act like a bit of a kind of gums. Um, and then we layer up the teeth after that. Uh, it makes them pop even more. Super hard to see on camera, but... Next thing we're going to do is to uh, put a base coat on all of the teeth and nails. So we're going to use Zandri Dust for that. Nice fine pointed brush. And then we are just going to paint his big chompers. Obviously this is a focal point of the miniature. So take your time and get details like this right. It'll make uh, all the difference towards the end. The little Gretchen also has teeth. Uh, they're very hard to see so if you're not comfortable with that just leave them. So there's all the teeth and claws base coated. So now it's on to Seraphim Sepia. The parts that we're gonna wash is anything that isn't the red completed armor. So all of the skin, the teeth, all of the black and blacky gray cloth, all of those bits are gonna get a coat of uh, Seraphim Sepia. And then we'll begin the layering process um, for the orc skin and teeth and all those bits and pieces. Now, after the shade is dried, your orc should be looking pretty sweet but he's got a better skin routine than i'm giving him credit for here so it's time to bring up that skin so we're going to start with war boss green this is the kind of the stage of the miniature where you want to spend kind of the most time most time maybe not the best the most patience just give this your all layering up the uh, the orc face especially he's got a lot of lines it's very easy to know where the highlights are supposed to go um, so just concentrate on that and 
if you do a really nice job on that the, the whole model gets pulled together so beautifully and the results speak for themselves I mean, already that's such a huge difference and with all of the skin layered up with the first coat he's going to look like this the perfectly acceptable place to leave the skin if you want to i'm going to take it just a little bit further with scarsnick green and I'm just going to touch the very edges of him again on the very tips of all his features, his ears, his little pig nose, lips, yeah, tips of his fingers, those kind of bits, and the highest point on all his muscles. Like I said, this is the, this is the war boss of a force. Um, people will be looking at him on the battlefield. When I feature him in battle reports, obviously the camera will pan over him quite a lot. So I want him to look um, the business. Can see how careful I'm being. He looks like a war boss to me. Next thing we're gonna do is just put a dot of Mephiston red on his beady little eyes. I don't know how many times I've read a Black Library novel where they describe the orcs as having beady little red eyes. So no point in arguing with the established lore. So the uh, eyes in this particular miniature are really well defined so they're super easy to paint. The uh, goblin on top is a little bit trickier. His right eye is very well defined and he's kind of squinting with his left eye so it's closed so I didn't know whether I should try and do anything and um, so I just left it. From here we are just going to layer up his teeth and claws which should be the last detail on these miniatures. As you notice, I didn't actually layer up any of the cloth. I just left that Corvus black washed. And no one is going to be looking at those particular details with the amount of other cool bits on this miniature. You can choose to do it if you want to, but I left it quite there. And the final result is this guy. Now, the question I have for you guys is he is going to be leading a studio army and feature in many battle reports. So I want him to have a suitably orky, impressive name. So I would love for you guys to help me in the comments below throwing out some cool orky names. I will shout out anybody who I choose the name from. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, support me, support the channel, subscribe, drop this video a like. And if you have any questions about anything I did in this video, please don't hesitate to drop me a comment. I will get back to each and every one of you. I will see you guys in the next video.